Okay, everybody, we are here in David Copperfield. Here's Mr. Wickford. He's in David Copperfield. You know who's not here? David Copperfield himself. He's he's actually not in this chapter. I have no idea why. Anyway, I have a bellow, so I'm going to clean this off. I also have a, a bit of a cold, so that's that's why I'm talking funny. So I give yarn to the cat. I give yarn to the I give yarn to the cat. I give yarn to the cat. I whatever. So with this puzzle, you want to put things where they're supposed to go. So the bird goes in the tree. The bow goes over there. The apple also goes in the tree. The horse goes over there. The horse goes over there. The bow goes on her shoulder. Uh, let's see. Windmill goes on the windmill, music on the stand, and finally, the yarn goes with the cat. The yarn goes with the cat. The yarn goes with the. I I I cannot handle this. I I I. Uh, am I supposed to land it on the sparkle or what is? Whatever. 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 I I I can't even handle that puzzle. So, uh, I cannot solve that puzzle yet. I, hmm. Okay, so this is a pairs puzzle. What you want to do is find pairs. And it's tricky because the pairs, um, are sometimes upside down in different sizes. So, for example, um, you know, those two spades were different, um, different directions. Horseshoes are going to be facing different directions as well. Let's see, the... That's that's basically it for the puzzle. Owl, owl. No, no, I'm not trying to get the owl. I'm trying to get the crown. So basically, the way to solve this puzzle is to click on everything. If you can click on something, it has a pair. If you can't, then it, it it's just there to distract you. And unfortunately, I make a mistake with this puzzle. I feel very sad. I forget to click the the clover over for this puzzle. I, I forgot to click on it, and that's that's a tragedy upon tragedies. Because that means I do not find all the clovers in the game. People are so dumb, it's hard to believe I'm the only one who knows how to switch debit and credit and put the spread in my pocket. Oliver and David are our mutual friends. So is Edwin. So that, that is, um, um, the clue for this puzzle. What did it say? David and Oliver are our mutual, Oliver and David are mutual friends. So is Edwin. And this gives us a cool thing that they invented for this game. It's the shadow graph. Here is Charles. You created so many books, yet you couldn't finish mine. Alas, when you died, you left me with no name, no face, no soul. That's why in your world, I'm simply an abstract figure with a mask. With this, what you want to do is click on the pictures in the order they appear in the dialogue. So it starts with Charles and then says books, and so that's how you know to put Charles and books onto the board. And you know what? It's a puzzle and it explains the story of this game. So apparently our villain is is from an unfinished book. But then I discovered I could take the form of the other antagonists inside your novels, dear Charles. I observed your life through their eyes. I can even flip through your life. Open it to any page. I see this guy is clearly trying to do my evil bad guy voice. <laughs> well, nice try. I'm the only one who can do the gruff voice, because I'm Though this time, travel is quite limited. And by that I mean limited by your life, dear Charles. Through Uriah Heep's eyes, I spy the first gray hair in your beard. Though I can just as easily enter an earlier book where you're but a lad taking your first shave. You whose hearty pen silences me.
I'm not the only one to suffer. You order death or prison for all your villains. Yet you dote on young fools like Oliver Twist. You pour your soul into them and grant them such wondrous earthly goods. Oh, good. Oliver Twist has a happy ending? Oh, I was worried about that. I, I mean, I knew bad things happened to the villains in the book. I just didn't know if Oliver got a happy ending. But I have a plan. A plan to change all your books, and your miserable life as well. But to accomplish it, I need money and the knowledge to do it. The former I can easily take from Wickfield. But where or oh where shall I find the latter? Where will he find the knowledge to overtake Charles Dickens? I don't know. Uh section. Anyway, hey, here's the villain, Uriah Heep. Hey, hey, what, wait, what? Mr. Wickfield? Looking a little pale there, buddy. Uh, how's it going? Help! That man stole my soul! Here, take this money and ride a cab to catch him. Oh. Well, that stinks. Sorry about that. Um, why did he steal your soul? I mean, the same thing happened to Oliver Twist, but... No money, no ride, no exceptions. Why is our villain stealing people's souls? I don't know. Anyway, I'm trying to have a big chase with the evil villain. Getting this baseball card of him put back together using black glue. Okay. Okay, yeah, I've got the baseball card. Now, how do you defeat the villain? You need to say the villain's name. So, what is his name? It's Uriah Heep. And he just jumps out and jumps into uh, our mutual friend, another book of Charles Dickens, which I've never heard of. Before. He takes this river road, the fool, to confuse observation or divert attention, if not solely to baffle me. But he must have the power of making himself invisible before he can shake me off. So yeah, this is a few years later when... Oliver, no, when Charles Dickens wrote this book, our mutual friend. Ooh, something's cool happening. Okay, so, he, he technically didn't write books, uh, Charles Dickens. He actually wrote this as a serial and a, a, a novel. That, that's how he wrote his books. So, so you know, like, um, you know, the magazine would pay him to write a 20-chapter book, and they'd publish a different chapter every month. So that, and later on, they would be all gathered together as an actual book. That That's how um, these novels came about. So, uh, you know, this leads to interesting questions. Like, when he started the book, did he have the entire book planned out? Or did he, like, maybe only plan the first five chapters? He waited to see what the response was, and then he sort of changed his book depending on how people responded. So, you know, if people really liked character A, he would focus on that character. Maybe. I don't know. That That's an interesting question to ask. And this is a puzzle here. We're just following footprints of the villain. Which leads us to the Metaphysical Society. 
Wait, so what? We have a philosopher society or something? Are, are we gonna meet, like, Hegel and Kierkegaard and, and, and stuff? So, my raven loves termites. My raven doesn't actually eat any of the termites, but it, he gives me the key so I can solve the complicated... Too complicated, but yeah, very complicated puzzle here. Um, hmm. So the colors indicate where the pieces are supposed to go, and you can rotate the wheels. So for example, we have three colors attached to the raven token. That means we want the raven token in the middle. Sort of like this. And uh, let's see, the shadowy figure is going to be between red and yellow. So it's going to be on the border between those two. It's going to be right above the raven token, which means I screwed up. Um, red and green is going to be... Here's the fastest solution. It's not incredibly fast, mainly because moving the pieces takes a little while. easy that you just move yellow, then you move green, and then you move red, and you don't have to remove them. 